Good morning. The Bible teaches that there is power in the name of Jesus. But what does that mean? Can I use the name of Jesus to get anything I want from God? How does the name of Jesus relate to prayer? How does the name of Jesus unlock the power and authority of heaven? These questions and more will be answered today as we consider the power of the name of Jesus. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for bringing me safely to the beginning of this new day. Thank you for keeping me safe through the night. And I pray that today may be a day where I live and move and have my being in you. Lord, I pray that the words that come from my mouth and the thoughts that are formed in my heart and the motives behind all of my actions, words and thoughts, may be pleasing in your sight and honouring to your name. Lord, I pray that you would be both my guide and my restrainer in all I do and say today, so that my words and deeds are not a work of my own flesh, but are guided by the promptings of your Holy Spirit. Help me, Lord, to walk in spirit and truth and keep me today so that my eyes are looking to Jesus and my ears are open to your still, small voice. Lord, I pray that you are glorified in all that we do. Keep me, Lord, I pray, from all temptations and deliver me from all the evils of this day. May today be a day when I learn more of you so that I may grow in a grace and in knowledge of my Lord and Saviour. Help me, therefore, to walk humbly before you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
I wanted to include something on this video which was light-hearted that helps us to consider the importance of names and how we think about names. So what you're going to see next is a clip from a show called Studio C. It was produced in America a few years ago. Now there's nothing offensive about this clip, so don't worry about that. Although if your name is either Agnes, Jessica or Eugene, you might disagree. Mama? Yes, sweetheart? Do you mind me asking why you named me Agnes? Well, sweetie, Agnes was the name of your grandmother, and you know she was an honorable and respected woman. Plus, she told us on her deathbed she wouldn't leave us nothing and would haunt us till the day we died unless we did it. <laughs> so we named you Agnes, and we inherited this wonderful ghost-free house. Yes, Mama, but don't you think it's kind of ugly? Well, I suppose the living room could use a little no, color. Mama, my name, Agnes, it's ugly. Hush now, child, or you'll bring down the spirit of your ugly grandmother upon us. <laughs> I just think it makes people treat me different. I think people like Jessica more than me just because her name is Jessica. Oh, nonsense. Your sister is a lovely and vivacious girl. Any attention she receives is purely earned. Hello, mother. <laughs> Why, hello, beautiful. You are looking absolutely radiant this morning. Oh, mama, you say that every morning. <laughs> to me, not Agnes. Oh. Jessica, sweetheart, I made a special breakfast just for you to help keep your voice silky smooth for the talent show tonight. Thanks, Mama. Gotta keep these pops well tuned. La 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 la! Oh, Jessica, first the homecoming queen, and now you're gonna be the winner of the school talent show. Oh. I am just so proud. I I'm gonna be in the talent show too, Mama. You are? What will you be doing? I'm singing too, Mama. Oh, Agnes, perhaps you should stick to something you really shine at. Like crocheting or owning cats. <laughs> but I don't do either of those things. Really? I could have sworn you did. <laughs> Butter in my toast, my toast is good. Why, that was beautiful, Jessica. <laughs> Mama, that was me. Did you really like it? No. <laughs> Good morning. And how are the two most beautiful women in town? Hi, Daddy. Oh, hello, Agnes, dear. I did not see you there. <laughs> well, how are Agnes and the two most beautiful women in town? Papa, I think you need to talk some sense into Agnes. She's fitting to compete in tonight's talent show. <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? I'd like to see a good crochet demonstration. <laughs> well, Papa, I'm competing, too. Oh, well, that about wraps it up then, huh? Maybe you should just stay home and take care of your cats. Why does everyone assume Jessica's going to win every time? Well, that's a fair question. Who else is competing, Jessica? Uh, Janice, Bertha, Olga, and that boy named Leonard. Hmm. I do not know them, but they sound untalented. <laughs> Leonard's tally is crushing coal into diamonds. He's way rich. Oh, and then there's that new girl. Oh, yes, I have not met her yet. What was her name? Kelly, spelled with an I. Oh, she sounds pretty. Yeah. <laughs> you are making judgments about these people based solely on their names. Jessica gets a free ride through life just because everyone expects her to be pretty and popular. Anything she could do, I could do twice as well. Name one. I could name ten, which is probably higher than you can count. <laughs> Counting's overrated. You know what? From now on, I'm going by my middle name, Tiffany. Oh, that's nice. I didn't even know you had a middle name. <laughs> I always just kind of thought of you as Agnes. Agnes oh. Ugly. Well, Ooh. look at this. Those must be for me. Well, actually, sweetheart, <laughs> they're addressed to Tiffany. Well, 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 I guess this just proves my point now, doesn't it? Who are they from, Daddy? A boy named Eugene Abernathy. Do you know him? No. But it sounds ugly. He does. Yes, he does. I don't want you to talk to that boy. Our Bible reading this morning is taken from Acts chapter 19, verses 8 to 16. Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. But some of them became obstinate. They refused to believe and publicly maligned the way. 
So Paul left them. He took the disciples with him and had discussions daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. This went on for about two years, so that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick, and their illnesses were cured, and the evil spirits left them. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, In the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. ever thought what's in a name? A Vietnamese man named his son Mei Phat Sal Nag Mruo, which means find 6,500, which is how much it cost him for ignoring the country's two-child policy. Now some countries they have official name lists from which you can choose a child's name, whilst others like Malaysia they've even had to ban certain names. For instance Al Gong, which means unsound mind and some Seng, which means gangster, and Chao Tao, which means smelly head. The thing is, names are important, both today and back in Bible times. Some people like Sarah, Abraham and Simon change their names to indicate something significant. In 1 Samuel 25, verse 25, Abigail told King David, My husband's name is Fool, and that's what he is. But the most significant name of all, of course, is the name of Jesus. Now, I believe there is immeasurable power in the name of Jesus. In Philippians 2, verses 9 to 11, it says, Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Some will bow out of love for that name, and others will bow because of fear. 
but the power of the name of Jesus will be evident to all of creation. And that same power is available to every true believer in Christ today. John 14 verses 13 and 14 says, And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. This is a great promise. But what does in the name of Jesus mean? Well, sometimes we'll pray, Lord, I want a new house, a new Mercedes, a Rolex, a new computer. And oh, yeah, boom, stamp of approval in the name of Jesus. And guess who decides whether somebody should get that stamp of approval? We do. But what does he mean? I believe that the name of Jesus isn't a magic formula. We can't just pray whatever we want add in the name of Jesus on the end. I think that that means that our prayer is going to be answered because we use the right formula. Or perhaps that God is up there listening and saying, nah, I don't think so. No, no, no. Oh, hang on. They said in the name of Jesus. Oh, OK. So, well, since you put it that way, you can have it. That's not how it works. This approach only leads to disappointment. People say, well, I tried what the Bible says. And it doesn't work. I prayed in the name of Jesus and nothing happened. Of course nothing happened because that's not what it means. So how does it work? How can I ensure that I access the power of Jesus name the way God wants me to? Well, I need to understand that if I use the name of Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a representative of Jesus Christ. Let me give you an example. In Acts 3 and 4, Peter and John are going into the temple and they see a man who's in his 40s who's been crippled from birth. When they heal him in the name of Jesus, it really creates a stir. People have been walking past him for years. Hey, isn't that what's his name? Yeah, that's him. What happened? Well, I don't know. Let's go find out. Crowds of people gather around and the apostles take the opportunity to preach the gospel. And next thing you know, here comes the captain of the guard and the priests and the Sadducees and Peter and John are arrested. The religious authorities, they're faced with an undeniable miracle. And so all they can do is threaten the apostles. And then in Acts 14, 18, it says that they commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to note this, that when the apostles preached, they did so in the name of Jesus. And what does that mean? Well, you can read the sermon in Acts chapter 3, and we can see there what it doesn't mean. They didn't preach the gospel and tag in the name of Jesus on the end. Preaching in the name of Jesus meant they preached as his representatives. If you have a look at how that works, yeah, because we have a parallel situation today. Let me give you an example. I can't just go up to someone and say, I arrest you in the name of Her Majesty the Queen. And the main reason I can't do that is because in the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I'm implying that I'm her representative. And clearly, I'm not. The same principle is found in Acts 19, verses 11 to 16. And we heard a bit of this earlier, didn't we, in our Bible reading. So I'm going to paraphrase for you just now. Paul is doing the most amazing miracles. Sometimes people bring pieces of cloth to him and all he's got to do is touch them. And the people touched by the cloth, they're healed or perhaps demons leave. But, you know, Paul is being watched. A Jewish high priest named Sceva has seven sons and they see him casting out demons. And they have this discussion. Well, did you see that? That's way cool. Yeah. How did he cast out that demon? It looks pretty simple to me. He used special words in the name of Jesus. Well, that's got to be better than abracadabra, isn't it? Hey, I know a guy down the street who's seriously weird. He's got a demon. Let's try it out on him. Great idea, dude. So off they go down the street into the guy's house. They gather around him and now it's time to get spiritual. In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. They didn't have a clue who Jesus was. The evil spirit leaves this man. Evil spirit leaves this man. That's what they said to him. Well, the Greek tells us more than the English. Because the English tells us that the evil spirit said, I know Jesus and I know Paul, but 
But in the Greek, there are two different words for know. It would be better if it said, I know Jesus and I know about Paul. I've heard about him. He's a pain in the neck. But who are you? And with that, this one man, fueled by demonic power, beats the living daylights out of all seven brothers. And they fled naked and bleeding. Now, this story has important implications for us. It means that when I use that phrase in the name of Jesus, I better make sure that I'm actually representing his interests. I can't say I claim that Mercedes in the name of Jesus, because if I do that, whose interests am I really representing? My own. Just because I'm lusting after that car doesn't mean God wants me to have it. But this story also demonstrates that our representation of Christ is based on relationship. The sons of Sceva made the mistake of thinking that it was a formula, but they didn't have the relationship. No relationship means no authority and no power. If I ask in the name of Jesus, I will ask according to his will, because I'm representing his interests. 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. I have to pray according to God's will. But I don't necessarily need a Bible verse to support what I'm asking for. And I'll show you what I mean. Imagine God sends me to Africa to preach the gospel. And I'm walking from village to village. And I'm preaching. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I could be a lot more effective if I had a motorbike. So what should I do? Get a Bible verse, a promise. I pull out my Bible concordance looking for a verse. But I'm not going to find a Bible verse on motorbikes. So I can't be worried about that. But I am representing the King of Kings. I'm representing Jesus. And I'm going to expect all the help I can get in doing his will most effectively. Now, changing the subject, I've never been bothered what people really call me. In fact, I've jokingly said you can call me what you like. Just don't call me a taxi or call me late for dinner. It's meant as a joke, but not everyone gets it. In all seriousness, it's not the label or my name that really makes the difference. It's not who I am that makes the difference. It's what or who I represent that makes all the difference. You know, you can be confident that if you're representing the interests of the kingdom of God, and not just your own interests, you will have all the backing of God's power and authority. Nothing will stand in your way. Absolutely nothing. Through faith, nothing can prevent you from achieving the will of God in your life. Let me remind you of Romans 8, 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? Now, once I've made certain that what I'm asking for is the will of God, for me, I can ask with confidence. Let me remind you of John 14, 13 and 14. It says, anything in my name, ask for anything in my name, and I will do it. You know, there's power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus brings deliverance from demonic powers. It brings about answered prayer. And the name of Jesus brings about salvation. I pray today that Jesus isn't just a name to you. I pray that you will have surrendered yourself to him, that he is your Lord and Saviour, and that you know his love, his mercy and grace in your life. May God bless you.
as we come towards the end of our worship for today, I'd like to share with you a benediction. It's from Colossians chapter 3. That the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. May God bless you this week.